Now we're going to go over backing up files on the robot. You need to have a good understanding of this so that you can save files here for later reference or viewing them on your computer or just in general for backups. So we go to menu, file, file, and right here is the backup screen. That's the first thing we must do is we have to set the correct device. So we say util set device. Now I personally usually use a USB disk on the uh, robot controller. It works uh, fairly well. Memory cards are a little faster and a lot more reliable. There's like a one or two percent chance of the USB backup uh, freezing the screen and you have to cycle the power to the robot to get the screen back. Um, I've been told though when the screen does freeze it should allow the program to continue. But that's the little risk that I want you to be aware of. So we're going to use this. So we let's say we've plugged in the USB, we've done that. If we had files on the USB disk, uh, in ordering to see them we have to actually press enter right here on all files. Now mine is blank right here. So what I want to do first is I want to make a directory. This is a folder where the backups will be contained. I recommend that you uh, always put the plant name. For instance, let's say the plant was um, EB and the uh, date afterwards, so 2014 today is the 30th and we have our file. Now you can see where, what folder we are in through this little top section right here. There are three main things you want to back up. You want to back up all of the above and the ASCII programs along with an image backup. The image backup will not be shown on RoboGuide software. It is available uh, when you are backing up the robot in the field and I, all of the above backs up like all the actual teach pendant programs error logs, diagnostics, vision data everything you would need for the robot um, for 99% of the cases and this is critical stuff if you have to do a uh, backup and you don't have time for too much you should always get uh, at least this stuff. So always doing all of the above. So it's a lot of useful information. You won't use most of that data, but it's still better to have it than not. The ASCII programs are text versions of the teach pendant programs that you have. They are viewable on your computer. You can use Microsoft Word. It will not originally recognize this program you'll have to tell it to open with Word and then it'll figure it out. The thing about ASCII programs is you can't back them up, open them on your computer, make changes, and then load them back onto the robot. The last backup, image backups, you would need to get maybe once uh, every few months. Image backups are a complete backup of the robot as it is at that state. It'll take everything um, and back it up. This is kind of a last resort file which will save all of your system variables, all your programs, everything in that. Um, it's extremely helpful to have one of those in case someone messes something up and you don't know what they messed up and you can't seem to get it to revert back. Um, by loading an image back up, you bring it back to a working state of the robot and you can load any teach pendant programs that were created after that image backup and uh, adjust anything else that needs to be done. I highly recommend before you actually load an image back up though, you do get mm, a backup of all the above first so that you have the current teach pendant programs uh, to load back on because more than likely your image backup 
will not include all the updates that you've done recently. So that's all three of the backups. What I highly recommend that you do is that you put all of these backups in their own special folder. So I'm going to make a folder and usually I name them based off uh, what the robot actually is. For instance, if this is a hot stamp uh, robot and it's on line one and this is robot two, then I would say hot stamp line one robot two. That's how I usually back these up. It makes things a lot easier uh, because then you know exactly where it is and if you're dealing with a giant plant with multiple robots, multiple lines, this is one of the best ways to go about this. So we have that and we're going to back up all of the above. The first question it asks, which you can't quite see right here, is do you want to delete the contents of this folder before backing up? We're actually not going to do this just yet. I'm going to change the display so you can read this completely. So inside this folder, back up all of the above. Do you want to delete the contents of this before backing up the files? It really doesn't make a difference since the folder is blank already. So we're just going to say yes for the heck of it. Oh, I'm holding shift. That's what's causing me trouble. And then it's saying it's going to delete the contents of it and back up all the files. That's what you want, and you say yes. And now it'll back up everything that you would need. So now that that backup is done, to go back to this folder here, we want to go up one level. So we press enter. Now if we wanted to see the contents beforehand, we could go to this all of the above and press enter. And this is everything that was just backed up. There's a lot of stuff. So let's go up one level. There's that folder we made already. Make directory. We are going to type in hot stamp line one robot two and I put a T at the end to represent text feel free to change up your method of organizing this stuff but I still recommend keeping those two separate makes it a lot easier for uh, troubleshooting these programs later and there's some software I can suggest and that will be extremely helpful if you have all your SD files in one folder alone so we back up the ASCII programs. It says, do you want to save the contents of this? And you could keep saying yes over and over, or you can just say all, and it'll get them all really quick. Because this is on the computer, it goes extremely fast. We've got all the backups. Usually, an all of the above backup takes a minute or two, and the ASCII backup takes 30 seconds to a minute. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is when you set the device, there is a USB on Teach Pendant. Some Teach Pendants have a USB slot. It is the slowest way to back up that I have seen. It can take over 30 minutes on rare occasions to actually back up files. More than likely, it just takes up to five times as long to back up the files. I highly recommend you don't use that. It's also a lot more prone to failure than the USB disk right here, which is just plugging your USB into the control box. Now to load files, it's pretty straightforward. First, let's say someone had gone through here and actually deleted a program or change it in some way that messed it up. To load that program back, we go to file. Now we're currently in a folder right here, so we might want to go up one level. We get to this hot stamp line one or two, press enter. And we need to find that teach pendant program. 
So we can sort it by teach pendant programs through this. This sorting method is very helpful. Alternatively, if you sort by all and go to the bottom of this screen, you'll see all the different sorting methods here as well. This allows you to just press enter on the teach pendant and now you're seeing only teach pendant programs. Alternatively, you can go to this teach pendant section right here and you can load all the teach pendant programs if you press load right there. So that's an option as well. Now, we needed to load training right there. So we simply go to it, say load, and yes, that's it. If it's one that's already there, you say load, yes, if you want to overwrite it, and you can say yes. You can't load in the programs that you currently have open, but uh, this is extremely helpful for you when you need to load some programs up. There are some files that you can't load when you have the controller in its normal state uh, because the files are currently being used. Some files, it, when you say load, will actually require you to load it in a controlled start. One such file is the system variables. Now normally you're not going to be loading these too often, but if somebody messes around with them, you may need to load the backup. So right here we have the system variables. If we say load, it says, do you want to load this? You say yes, convert it, yes. System variables load at control start only. To do this load in a controlled start, you would normally go to function, next page, cycle power, but when you're cycling the power, hold down previous and next, and this will bring up the uh, alternate ways to reboot the robot. When you load the controlled start, you'll see something like this. This is what the controlled start would look like. Now I have to use this view when I'm working with this, but if you want to load some files, you press menu and then say file. And it would say, this is where you currently are. We're going to go up one level, make sure we're in the right folder right there. And Scroll down to system variables. There we go. Now say load. Yes, convert. And teach pending is disabled. There we go. Turn the teach pending on to do it again. We're going to just press reset. Load, yes, convert. And now it's loaded. Before it did not work because I didn't have the teach pendant on. So once you're done with all that, you'd press function, cold start. Once you want to get out of the uh, controlled start. We have gone over backing up the files. The only thing I can't really show you on this is how to do an image backup and an image restore but when you back up the image files which will appear somewhere around there you will have to have the teach pendant on when you do this and it will cycle the power to the robot on its own once it's finished doing its image backup it'll cold start the robot back and you'll be able to do whatever you need. To restore the image files, I'll walk you through it um, just in instructions. First, you would cycle the power to the robot, and while it's cycling power, hold F1 and F5 at the same time. 
then uh, and once the robot has finished loading its initial stuff a menu will be popping up for you and under that it'll say uh, image backup slash restore you'll click that you'll say you want to restore an image file you'll navigate through your files until you find the correct folder and once you've done that you say select this folder it'll say image files have been identified in this folder do you want to load these files and you say yes it will then take a while to load them but once it's loaded the robot will be in the same state it was at the time of backup I mostly use image backups as a overall backup of the robot once I've finished commissioning a robot that way I have a way to convert it back to the state it was in when it was commissioned um, it's very helpful to do that because if you're having some weird oddball issue with the robot you can always resort to that and load back your teach pendant programs and everything else that's about it for backing up files